Hey guys, we're looking at review number five, which talks about circles. So we're going to look at different angle relationships with circles. Uh, we'll look at some questions with completing the square. And we'll also look at some questions dealing with areas of sectors. So um, the first one we're going to look at, question one. Um, and they, they're asking us in this question, we got some chords, um, we have two lines that intersect at a point G, and the other part, they want us to know which statement is not always true. So, a um, couple of the things that we need to kind of work on is throw some labels in. Um, you know, I'm going to mark some of the angles. So we want to see if... Uh, we got similar triangles or in this circle. So like in this case right here, oh, I know I got a pair of vertical angles. So I'm going to mark those. Um, now, one of the other things that we have is we have another pair of congruent angles, angle E and angle D, because um, those are both inscribed angles. So if we have inscribed angles, they meet an arc, the same arc. If they meet the same arc in a circle, then they're going to be equal. So in this case, because you got two angles, because we have angle angle, I know right now that D is not going to be the correct answer because that's always going to be true. Um, and also, B, C, E, G, and F, D, G, that's always going to be true also because of the inscribed angles. So angle angle works inscribed angles now one of the things that's not true because they're similar the correct answer for this one is going to be a kind of like we talked about number five CG and FG I mean you can kind of clearly see based on the two triangles themselves that segment here is obviously longer than that segment so you will see when we do some of the circle questions you'll see some similarities are similar triangles. Uh, in that case, you know, segments are not going to be congruent. And that can kind of be illustrated by the figure. Now, the next one we're going to look at, we're going to look at a completing the square question. So there's a couple here for on two and four. Um, and we're going to look at number four. So the goal of two and four is to complete each of the squares. That way you have the equation for the circle. So, you know, we talked about this before. I'm going to make up an equation right here just to kind of illustrate the point at which we want to be at. So if this was my equation of a circle, from this information I can tell you what the center is going to be. So the center is going to be negative 3, 5, because it's the opposite values of what's in the parentheses with x and the y. And then the radius r is going to be 6, because it's going to be the square root, because this would represent, that number represents r squared. So if they want us to find the radius, then we're really going to have to focus on that number after the parentheses. So what you're going to want to do when you do complete the square is first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to add the 12 to both sides, any any number, any constant. So now we got x squared plus 4x, and then we're going to need to complete those squares. Plus y squared minus 6y. I'm going to space for that third term, and that's going to equal 12. So I talked about this in class. If you take the linear term, divide it by 2, and square it, it'll give you that third term. So if you do 4 divided by 2, take that 4, 4 divided by 2 squared gives you a 4. And take the negative 6 divided by 2 and square it, that's going to give you a positive 9. So like in this case, I'm going to have to add the 4 and the 9 to each side. Now that's going to allow me to complete the squares with the x and y values. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, so that's the number that's going to be in the parentheses. And then negative 6 divided by 2 would be negative 3, so that's going to be y minus 3. And then when I add these three numbers together, I get 25. So we need to focus on that 25. And again, 25 is an answer, but that's r squared, so it's not going to be that. But if you take the square root of that 25, that'll give you the radius, which ends up being 
five. So you can use that to help you with number two as well and the other questions in this assignment. So kind of moving on from there, we're going to look at one other question. We're going to look at one of the sector questions. We're going to look at question eight. Uh, they got an area of the shaded sector. So they give us the area. And we talked about this formula when we did the area unit. So that's going to be x over 360. And x is our angle times pi r squared. So they tell us the length of NL is 6, which is that diameter, which means the radius is going to be 3. I'm also going to go ahead and fill in the area, which was 2 pi. So now from here, you can kind of work your way backwards to figure out what x is going to be. So you can do that by first squaring. So we have 9 pi here. And then what you can do, I'm not going to finish this one for you, but divide the 9 pi on both sides, and then you got a proportion that you can solve to figure out which of these, which of these four angle measurements x ends up being. Okay. So again, when you see these questions, just read it carefully, because like, this one says the area, so like again, you're plugging that in for A, which we've seen before on other questions, okay? So hopefully that helped, and uh, if you have any questions, see me in class.